Like a great prologue or establishing shot, the facade of a haunted attraction is the first thing someone sees when approaching it, so it's very important to get it correct. When it comes to Universal's Halloween Horror Nights, quite possibly the most famous haunt event in the world, they've found a way over the years to create great haunted house facades. They showcase how the creative teams use depth, lighting, etc. to create an entrance that enhances the storytelling of any given house. So with this video, I wanted to create a love letter for the HHN facade, talk about its history, the different unique elements from different styles of HHN facades, and really look into why they're so important. As far as detailed facades are concerned, they go back as far as the event itself, with Universal's first Halloween Horror Nights haunted house, the Dungeon of Terror. Opening in 1991 within the unused Jaws queue, this house would be a dungeon featuring many terrifying characters, go figure. And the facade for this house would send you through a castle wall as a caged woman hung above you. It's also said that scare actors would yell and taunt guests from above, adding some more energy to this entrance. Like the house itself, it was pretty straightforward, but set a precedent for well-themed facades that set up a specific mood to coincide with the location of the house itself. And as the event evolved throughout its first decade, the icon era in the 2000s, and the IP years of the 2010s, Universal would try different things with the types of facades they incorporated, tailoring them to fit the story they were trying to tell with each haunted house. While there are so many memorable facades through the 30 plus years of HHN, there are too many to talk about all of them. So I broke them up into six categories as a frame of reference. So let's get started with the key art facade. This is the simplest form of facade and typically consists of a giant cutout of a house's main poster as the signifier for the entrance. Most of these facades relate to IP houses that typically have a famous poster to use as the facade. Houses like Halloween Hell Comes to Haddonfield from HHN 26 or all three of the Horrors of Blumhouse houses from HHN 27, 28, and 31 respectively. However, they can also be used for originals as was the case with HHN 27's Hive. The pre building house houses also come to mind, as at this point they are typically decked out with key art on the exterior and sometimes accompanied with some props, although these houses do typically contain a more formal facade inside. Next we have a facade style that has some overlap with key art, which I'm calling the paper facade. This is exactly as it sounds, a facade designed to replicate some sort of print document such as a newspaper or book pages. This style is similar to the key art as it is rather flat, but typically is a bit more complex with its storytelling. Lunatic's Playground, Chance's Icon House from HHN 26, utilize the front page of a newspaper to set up the origin story of Chance, and HHN 30's Revenge of the Tooth Fairy House use the pages of a storybook to present the exposition for the house itself, setting up the narrative of James and his conflicts with the Tooth Fairies. This style of facade has also been seen in Universal Studios Hollywood, with 2019's Holidays in Hell featuring a New Year's greeting card as the facade, Creepshow utilizing a comic book entrance, and 2021's The Bride at Frankenstein Lives featuring a giant book with impressive artwork. While these facades aren't too common, they have been used very well in beginning the story in a more abstract way, which I personally appreciate. The next type of facade is what I like to call the familiar location. This is exactly as it sounds, bringing a location from a specific IP or original lore to life in a spectacular fashion. As far as IPs go, Universal has only gotten better at creating these locations with time. Whether it's the Slaughtered Lamb from American Werewolf in London, Captain Spaulding's Museum of Monsters and Mad Men from House of a Thousand Corpses, or the breathtaking recreation of Hill House from The Haunting of Hill House, the details that made these locations so iconic in the first place are all brought to life in a way that will make any fan of that property excited to go into them. Now I mentioned lots of IP houses here, but this can be done for originals too, specifically the ones that are more familiar to HHN lore. This is more the case for a house like HHN 25's Body Collector's Recollections, which brought you straight to Shady Brook Asylum, a place that is so important to the history of the event and its characters. Now these next two categories really play with space, really showing how the creative team can utilize the space they're given to build something truly incredible. First, I wanna talk about facades that manipulate height. 
aka the multi-level facade. These facades, typically found within sound stages, really take advantage of the large space they have and are designed in such a way that feels super grand. The poltergeist facade from HHN28 comes to mind here, as you enter through the drained swimming pool looking up to see the house from the movie, creating the effect that the house and the horrors inside are actually looming above you. However, my favorite facade in this style, and one of my favorite facades of all time, is the facade for HHN31's Fiesta de Chupacabras, which really uses its multiple levels to show the complexity of the building arrangements in this little town. With the colors and firecracker sounds, it's less menacing than say the poltergeist facade, however it shows the sprawling nature of the town that you're going to get lost in, really adding that gravitas to the setting that a house as tight as this one really needs. However just as height can be manipulated, it's more common to see the creative team play with width, and that is the focus of the next category, the open space facades. Like those familiar locations, these are some of the most commonly used, but have been done to great effect over the years. Facades that use the natural elements really work in this style. Think of the graveyard from HHN29's Graveyard Games and Universal Monsters. However, the same effect can be done to involve man-made structures too. Think of the buildings and courtyards from HHN31's Dead Men's Pier Winter's Wake, or the gas station from HHN30's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, another familiar location. These facades can use scare actors like the previously mentioned Graveyard Games, adding a bit more energy to the surrounding set pieces. While this category can seem kind of broad, a lot of these different facades use their space to their advantage, either recreating a moment from a previously seen IP, or using characters or props to begin telling an all new story. And speaking of storytelling, I want to talk about the final facade type that I've yet to discuss, which is what I call the scene in motion. While other facades might use scare actors, these facades are purposely set up so you are witnessing the story being told immediately upon entering. This is seen in the dynamic Wicked Witch seen from HHN 28's Scary Tales Deadly Ever After, and the ruins of Frankenstein's castle from HHN 30's The Bride of Frankenstein Lives, all of these facades have detailed and impressive sets for sure, but the focus isn't necessarily on where you are, but more on what's going on and how these scenes will set up the plot of the house. Now we talked a lot about facades in relation to grand physical set pieces, but I also want to mention the effect of screens, music, other elements in creating the facade experience. First talking about screens, they've been used for a long, long time to add to a facade. We've seen it at HHN 28, Slaughter Cinema, and even Lunatic's Playground from HHN 26 that I mentioned earlier. They're a great additional tool on top of physical sets and can be used to a really fun effect as seen in those previous houses. The same goes with music, and I feel like this is important when it comes to those famous locations. A facade like The Exorcist or Halloween wouldn't be complete without that classic score. And even houses that are not based on an IP can fit into this with original or pre-existing music adding to an overall setting. I think about this with Deadman's Pier as the violin music is so important to the story of the house and it's heard very faintly in the beginning amongst the other sounds of the wind. It really does well to create an atmosphere. I talked a lot about facades in relation to the story of a haunted house, but creating a great atmosphere is truly the most important aspect of a facade. I think about a facade like Dead Waters, which really just is there to get you on the boat, the setting of the house, but uses the lighting, the music, and of course that great set piece to make you feel like you're in the bayou. I think the same can be said about Wicked Growth Realm of the Pumpkin from HHN 30. This facade is really pumpkin towers and that pumpkin tunnel, but it creates such a great atmosphere for the more grounded and traditional aspect of this haunted house that really made it stand out. Because truly the facade is the beginning of the story being told by the creatives, whether that's in regard to the plot or the atmosphere of the haunted house. Whatever it is, the facade should represent the creativity, the passion put into these haunted house put right on display the first thing you see all of that effort all that love for the property or the original story synthesized into one location one primary scene facades like puppet theater captive audience or hill house or dead waters or fiesta de chupacabras those kind of facades it's clear they're there for a reason and i think that's what really resonates the most with me at least when it comes to the H. HHN facade. 
So I've talked a lot about HHM facades, but I want to know what are your favorite HHM facades? They can be more recent, they can be from the past, they can be from Universal Hollywood. Sorry, Hollywood folks, I didn't really talk about your event that much. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite Halloween Horror Nights facades are. I really hope you enjoyed this little video talking about the HHN facades. If you like HHN of the past and present, we are in HHN 32 announcement season and construction is about to start, I think in the next few weeks, month or so. If you like all that stuff, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Also, one last thing, even though this video is arriving near the end of June, this is my contribution to the HHN at Home project for 2023. It's an internet campaign that brings all us HHN YouTubers and creators out to support the Trevor Project, which gives help to LGBTQ plus kids in need of it. And all the information for HHN at Home and the Trevor Project can be found in the description below. If you have the means to, I highly recommend to donate, um, again, down in the description below. But if you don't, that's okay. Just sharing the link would mean a lot to me. And that's it. I want to thank you all for watching this video, of course, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.